good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the webinar on Agile and AI, the next frontier of business transformation. And this webinar is organized by Lean Icon Training and Technology. My name is Carlos, and I'm honored to serve as the host for this event. So as we gather here today, we embark on a journey to explore the transformative potential of Agile methodologies and artificial intelligence. Um, and this is going to help in shaping the future of business. The rapid pace of technological advancement and the ever evolving demands of the market necessitates innovative approaches to drive organizational growth and success. So it's in this context that Agile and AI emerge as powerful tools that can revolutionize uh, approach to business transformation. So at Lean Icon, we are passionate about empowering individuals and organizations with the knowledge, skills, and insights they need to thrive in today's dynamic um, landscape. So this webinar um, represents our commitment to providing a platform that will enable us to learn, to collaborate, and explore um, cutting edge concepts that can propel your business forward. So throughout this session, we will have the privilege of hearing from experts who have mastered the intricacies of Agile and AI. And please join me in, uh, in extending a warm welcome to our speakers. We have Daniel Costina and Dora Jouet. Okay, so Daniel is a principal consultant and coach in Agile Digital Transformation Athlete. He's a change agent, coach, and mentor who is passionate about the adoption of technology and other practices by organizations. Daniel, who is a customer-centric product manager, he has successfully delivered digital solutions and provided guidance to organizations that are undergoing digital transformation by leveraging on design thinking, lean startup, and agile methodologies to accelerate innovation. Dora, Dora is the head of data analytics and business insights at Heidberg. She has an extensive background in data science and AI across diverse industries such as finance, sports, CPG. She's quite passionate about how data can be a powerful tool in organizations' decision making. Currently, um, Dora is based in Hungary. Um, thanks, thanks for joining um, Dora and Daniel. So the speakers will give, um, will give us five minutes presentations each. Then we, the participants and attendees, we can share insights and post our questions in the chat or use the um, Q&A feature on the webinar. Okay, so I will now hand over to Daniel to um, start with this presentation to commence the session. Daniel. Okay. Hello, Carlos, and um, thanks for those kind words. Um, I'm super excited uh, to be here to uh, share on my knowledge and expertise on uh, agile transformations. So hello, everyone, and thanks for joining today's session. In this short presentation, um, I seek to highlight uh, why the next phase of business transformation is going to be human-led. Hence, the need for organizations to optimize their people's strategy for a successful digital transformation. The topic for discussion is enterprise agile transformation uh, with a caption, a human-centered approach to building a digital organization. Enterprise agile transformation is um, it's a growing concept and as part of um, digital transformations all over. So with this understanding of um, our attendees, um, permit me to use uh, the business model canvas by Alex Osterwald to illustrate the level of impact uh, technology is having on businesses. So the business model represents um, the various components required to run a business. So a startup will typically have a single business model or some few, whilst enterprises would have um, a lot of or different or a lot more business models um, satisfying different customer segments. So technology is 
impacting how um, customers would want uh, problems to be solved for them. So currently, uh, customer preferences are fast changing, where we have customers uh, preferring to be serviced more on digital platforms. Customers want faster services and excellent customer experience. And for businesses to be able to deliver this, we need to reimagine or relook at our value propositions. Um, businesses must be innovative about the value they are delivering to the customer. If for existing offerings, we are looking at how can we enhance them. So in the case of banks, you would have loans and insurance products being embedded in the customer buying processes. So you could be buying an airline ticket and right after purchasing the ticket, you have your, you could purchase your travel insurance. So businesses have to be innovative to be able to deliver these services to the customers. So they are leveraging on various channels like the mobile apps, wearables, like the recent uh, Apple glasses that was released by uh, Apple. To also maintain that customer relationship and deliver that fast service, we are looking at chatbots, leveraging social media, call centers to ensure that our customers are consistently satisfied. To deliver this, there's a need for strong operations, a back office that's capable of one, building the innovative products, two, maintaining the channels that we use to service our customers. So there are some key activities that technology is um, bringing into businesses now. So now a lot more businesses are going into software build. We are looking at process automations. Um, top of mind for most leaders now is cybersecurity and data analytics with AI, and um, which Dora, um, my co-presenter, would highlight on in the next presentation. To be able to perform these activities, there's a good demand for digital skills. So we have demand for business analysts, product managers, product owners, sex data analysts, and these skills are in short form. So businesses are struggling to get these talents to be able to deliver these activities. Partnership models are changing. Uh, we are now partnering with, businesses are now partnering with competitors in the same industry to deliver uh, value to customers. Businesses are partnering with other businesses in other industries, all to ensure that our customers are satisfied. And this is also changing our revenue models. So there's increasing cost due to the purchase of technology licenses, cloud transformations, and all these technologies are causing our, the bringing on board all these technologies tend to increase the overall cost of digital transformations. On the revenue end, businesses are having, they're changing um, revenue models where businesses can use subscription models rather than a one-time payment fee businesses are taking payments in cryptocurrencies. So in a whole technology is affecting every aspect of our business model. And this comes with a lot of challenges. And as like the, the need for more talents, the increasing costs, the building products that our customers will, will desire or would always want to use. And traditional businesses or non-software businesses are having great challenge in maneuvering to become digital businesses. To deliver on your digital business model, you will require a digital business operating model. And the components of a digital operating business operating model would include a digital business strategy. So currently, all our strategies or most strategies are becoming digital, where businesses are spelling out what technologies they are going to leverage on to improve their competitive advantage. Business leaders are also to enable an environment where there is innovation within our business models. So gone are the days where a business agreed on a strategy and delivered it over the next five years. In today's uh, digital age, 
businesses of all sizes are under pressure to change how they operate and interact with their customer daily. To be able to deliver on the business strategies, organizations will require these three pillars. We have technology and data pillar, which usually is spelled out in our strategies, what technologies will make us more competitive. We are looking at our own design, how our people, processes, and structures aligned to be able to adopt these technology. How, our, our, how is our organizational design modeled to enable us build quality software? And the third pillar being culture. With the wrong culture in place, our strategies will be eating for breakfast and will not see the light of day. To be able to drive these three pillars, we need a strong foundation of digital leadership, where we're looking at leaders with growth mindsets, leaders who are consistently seeking improvement. We're looking at leaders who understand the era that we are in, digital leaders, leaders who will be researching on what is AI and its impact on my business. How am I leveraging the data that all the technology I'm implementing is delivering for me? So with a, an operating system, we, we, we need to be able to optimize every single part of the system. We don't just come up with a great strategy and then bring in all the technology and then pay little attention to what organizational design looks like or what our strat our culture is. If we don't pay equal attention to all these aspects of the operating model, there's a chance that we are going to uh, have challenges with our digital transformation. In a book by Prof. John P. Cotter, that's Accelerate, he says we have to rethink the organization because we find ourselves um, the, it says the world is now changing at a rate at which the basic systems, structures, and cultures built over the past century cannot keep up with the demand being placed on them. Hence, there's a need for leaders to rethink the organization, to rethink how do we design the organization to be fit for purpose for the age that we find ourselves in. I'm sure in our transformations, we are seeing some challenges and wondering, how do we keep the momentum going? How do we ensure that the, all the investments we are making into technology is delivering the right uh, value or return on revenue? Also, um, I'm sure you would have experienced some challenges. So if there are any challenges you've experienced before, please feel free to share it in the chat. What challenges have you experienced with your digital transformation that you've been involved in. And I um, think we would want to know how also, and within the discussions, we would look at how we could um, be able to overcome some of these challenges by adopting the right operating model. So for most businesses, um, to be able to solve some of these challenges, um, well, the business would first create a digital transformation strategy, uh, looking at its current um, functional operating model. So we'll, we'll now come up with our digital transformation strategy. Then we would create digital factories, digital innovation teams to help in delivering certain aspects of the uh, strategy. So what happens is these digital factories um, are to work with the existing functions, but there's this culture clash between the functions and the digital factories. Also, the products that are rolled out by the digital factories are not fully supported by the business. Uh, they tend to see it as something meant for the, those doing digital, and they continue with how business as usual. But now, we can't do business as usual anymore because the business is now software business. So to be able to overcome some of these challenges with this model of a digital factory working alongside our existing functional businesses. There's an integrated digital 
and technology model where the IT teams are made to work much more closely with the technical teams uh, to release solutions. In that case, there are still some challenges because um, the IT team could be using our traditional waterfall model in delivering systems, whilst the digital factories are leveraging on agile practices. Also, the main business will still not support some of these solutions that are being released and uh, integrations even into existing systems by IT is a challenge, uh, even with these modifications in the model. So with that, businesses aim to move into an, an agile operating model. And here, the bring or incorporate agile practices at scale across the whole organization. So, the, so what's agile? Just a brief um, explanation for what agility is. So the concept of agility has usually been limited to a framework with roles, events, artifacts, tools, processes, and practices. So we have a Scrum, Skilled Agile Framework, Kanban, Large Skill Scrum. All the frameworks exist to help us with these tools and processes, practices to help us be agile. But agility goes beyond that. It it's enables individuals, teams, and organizations to exemplify a set of principles, values, and mindsets. These then enable us to bring or create the needed digital culture within our business. So agile moves way beyond just frameworks with tools and practices. It's a culture shift, it's a mindset shift. And to be able to get the best out of your technology, agility is required. So enterprise agile-wide transformation means reimagining the entire organization. It's a network of high-performing teams, each going after clear end-to-end business-oriented outcomes and possessing all the skills needed to deliver it. This means we have to rethink the whole operating model. We need skills from across all functions. We need people aligned across value streams. We need high-performing cross-functional teams. We, don't, we need people to start thinking in value streams. What does my customer journey look like? That's agile at scale. In, a, in an article by Mackenzie and Cole with the title, The Impact of Agility, How to Shape Your Organization to Compete, uh, it's realized how uh, the metrics gathered from the research showed that most successful agile transformations deliver a 30% increase across the following metrics. So in terms of customer centricity, operational performance, uh, employee engagement, and efficiency across the whole organization. Also the speed of delivery of products or the taking decisions is five to 10 times faster. And the agile ways of working is seen to be the number one ranking um, enabler of innovation within organizations. So we don't form um, innovation departments to enable innovation across the organization. We need enterprise agile transformation to enable the whole organization work as a unit to deliver that transformation. So, in a, in a webinar I, 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 I participated in, in uh, I think last a week ago, um, the was an example of the digital transformation journey at Porsche, the car maker. So, in 2015, they introduced digital transformation strategy into um, Porsche. Then in 2016, they formed their Porsche Digital, more like um, a digital factory. Then fast forward 2017, they needed to improve their ways of working. So agile practices were introduced. Then in 2018, due to the benefits gained from the introduction of agile practices, they went for the skilled agile framework, skilled agility across the entire organization. From 2029 to 2021, they became a product organization focused on delivering customer-centric products 
that they use in their vehicles. So in a nutshell, the myth that Agile is ways of working is a concept for tech companies and software teams is no more. Traditional businesses are being forced to develop their own software since they can't outsource some critical systems they use in serving their customers. An example is the case of a, a bank where majority of transactions are performed on a digital platform. It will not be strategically wise to outsource the build of such platforms so that when there are customer challenges, uh, there's delay in resolution. So some early adopters have seen the impact of Agile on their software build and the transition to a fully Agile operating model. While some leaders are still skeptical about the transition, is this for me, what's the impact on my business? But in the coming years, a lot of companies will cross that chasm and join the early adapters. Because after the massive uh, investments done into bringing technology into our organization, there's a need to get the a right return on investment. Hence, agile transformations, enterprise agile transformation will be the next frontier for business transformation. So I hope I was able to bring some clarity to why the need for enterprise agile transformation. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. So quickly, we'll uh, switch to Dura. Dura, can you take it from there? Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I would like to present today uh, the AI transformation in a dynamic business ecosystem. Uh, my name is Dura, and I work at Heidberg uh, for quite a while now, I think seven months, and I've been in data science for more than two years. And to start with, I would like to introduce what is AI transformation in the first place. Uh, AI transformation refers to the integration of AI technologies into business processes to improve decision making, increase efficiency and drive innovation. Some key examples of AI uses include natural language processing, predictive uh, processing, predictive analytics and machine learning. When utilized properly, AI can become a team's biggest asset. Uh, we arrived at the four features of uh, AI, uh, let's say, strength in corporate, and I can I would like to start with the task automation. Uh, in fact, AI uh, enhances the efficiency and productivity. Uh, AI technologies have the potential to streamline and automate various tasks and processes within organizations through intelligent automation. Repetitive and mundane tasks can be efficiently handled by AI models, allowing employees to focus on more strategic and creative activities. This leads to improved productivity and optimized resource utilization. The second point I would like to highlight is the data-driven decision-making. One of the most significant, advan uh, significant advantages of AI is its ability to process and analyze vast amounts of data in real time. In fact, by leveraging advanced analytics and machine learning algorithms, business can extract valuable insight from their data. It enables, for example, the data-driven decision-making, and AI also can ad identify patterns, trends, and correlations that might be difficult for humans to uncover, empowering organizations to make more informed choices and develop effective strategies. The third point is the personalized marketing. Um, we, are, we know that marketing now has become personalized, but uh, AI can make it even more personalized with the data-backed customer preferences and behaviors. In fact, the AI enables businesses to, to personalize their marketing efforts based on individual uh, customer preferences and behaviors by analyzing companies, by analyzing the customer data and leveraging AI algorithms. Campaigns, personalized recommendations, and tailored efforts can be easily generated with the AI models. This leads to improved customer engagement and customer loyalty. And last but not the least, which kind of is the most important uh, whenever it uh, relates to security and uh, cybersecurity for the corporate, the risk mitigation and fraud detection. 
the AI technologies also play a crucial role in identifying potential risks and detecting fraudulent activities. AI algorithms can analyze large volumes of data to spot anomalies and flag uh, suspicious transactions um, and prevent fraudulent behavior. And that's how AI can be seen in corporate nowadays. And uh, I would like to move to a few examples that I would like to highlight in terms of AI integration. Um, one of the uh, examples is the Capital One uh, in the uh, finance industries. Uh, Capital One uses AI for credit scoring and underwriting, leveraging machine learning models to assess credit worthiness and make loan decisions. The second example I would like to highlight is the healthcare industry, the Path AI. I'm not sure if you ever heard about Path AI, but uh, this company uses AI algorithms to analyze pathology slides, uh, slides aiding pathologists in diagnostic diseases like cancer more accurately and efficiently, which is a big step now in the healthcare. Siemens, from its end in the manufacturer industry, uses AI powered predictive maintenance systems and uh, they employ to monitor man machinery performance and detect potential failures. Last but not least, Netflix, which is quite famous in the customer experience industry, uh, uses AI uh, algorithms analyzer, analyzer to, you, to uh, analyze preferences and viewing patterns to provide personalized content recommendations. So whenever you open your Netflix account, you can see more uh, fine-tuned recommendations and suggestions for you to watch. Now, uh, with more growth in the AI usage, there is also significant challenges that are arising. Three of these whole challenges uh, are the increased fraudulent activities. Uh, in fact, malicious actors can exploit AI algorithms to deceive systems or manipulate data, which makes it like quite double-edged uh, uh, growth, as it also uh, decreases the fraudulent attacks uh, in other sites. And for human adaptability, we all we always hear that AI will replace employees, but in fact, it is like a tool that enhances and improves employees' performance. It's just like computer when it got introduced to our world. Many people thought it can be uh, a substitute for a human and the workforce, but it was a really good tool that everyone is using right now. Um, but these skeptics are, are always uh, present and uh, many people fear this and they are really seeing AI as a negative tool. The lack of quality data, there are many challenges in acquiring and creating relevant and representative data, but these challenges can be always solved. As we can see in the next slide, uh, the next slide is uh, three solutions that uh, were suggested to fight against these three challenges. Uh, one of these uh, is to develop robust security measures and continuously update AI systems to stay ahead of emerging threats um, and also equip employees with the necessary skills to work alongside AI technologies, um, workshops, seminars, and uh, presenting AI with more friendly view for employees and remove any skeptics about being a substitute to them. Uh, and investing in data governance practices, data cleansing techniques, and data sharing partnerships, and that's to enhance the data quality, to have more unified and um, standard pattern of data in the data lakes on all corporate will make it more easy to incorporate and integrate AI in the, in the corporate world. I hope I could introduce the uh, challenges and solution, uh, solutions for the AI transformation despite the technical issues. Um, um, I really apologize about it. Uh, and if you have any questions, please free, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dora. So um, I'll post my, first, my question first before I take the ones from the Q&A. So <clears throat> for every initiative, um, it's, it's normal to encounter some challenges. So my question is, what, what challenges do you see organizations facing when, when they try to integrate Agile and AI into their, um, their business transformation initiative? And anyone can answer, Daniel, Dora, anyone? Daniel, will you take that? 
Okay, I was, okay. Let me, so with uh, Enterprise Agile Transformations, um, I'll say it's, it's a big change initiative, uh, which um, impacts um, every aspect of the business. Uh, some challenges is are, uh, with such transformations is the, the change management process. If, if there's not a well thought out change management process to ensure that everyone within the organization is brought along on that journey, there will be some naysayers who would have reasons why an enterprise or an agile way of working wouldn't fit into their departments. Also, the poor communication of the change uh, can impact um, embedding agile ways of working across the organization. Because it's a complex process, there's a need for a framework or a playbook that would align the whole organization on that journey. And um, some organizations um, would want to uh, create a bespoke free, uh, playbook for themselves, or they could leverage on existing frameworks that are taking best practices from uh, multiple agile transformations. So a lack of a playbook, poor communication, and poor change management practices will impact uh, the delivery of agile transformations. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, fr from my side about the uh, AI transformation and uh, what are the professional skills that are needed to successfully in incorporate and integrate AI, I would say the flexibility and the aptitude to change your workflow and your process while working. Many things can be changed with using AI and you should be um, open to change your process that has been done you you were doing for years um i met some employees who were really against uh, implementing ai in their workflow um and that's because it kind of changes their routine which is really uncomfortable so i would say one of the strength and let's uh, say the base uh, criteria is to be uh, acceptable for change yeah okay thank you um there's one question. It says, are there any specific skill sets or competencies that professionals should focus on developing to effectively leverage Agile and AI in the context of business transformation? And um, I would want you to fix that into um, in what ways can companies upskill their employees to use AI as well? Uh, for AI, it depends on, on how you're going to use it. For example, for administrative tasks. So if you are working in administration and you want to use AI in your workflow, probably you will be used prompt engineering. In most of the cases, for example, for email uh, improvement, uh, to review some draft about a report or, uh, let's say, accounting or something, uh, you should know what to write in the, uh, for example, GPT chat uh, or any other uh, AI model. Uh, you should be specific and accurate what to ask because this can really influence the accuracy and the performance of uh, the AI model. And if you are working, for example, in database administration or um, any task automation, you should also be aware of how you can structure the steps that you would like to the AI to perform. So that goes to more in-depth uh, technical expertise, uh, more than just prompt engineering. Maybe it, it comes that you should be knowledgeable about the uh, inner structure of the AI and how it works. So that might take really a while to acquire it and uh, have uh, an expertise in it. So these are just a few examples to clear how the skill set can be uh, really influenced by the task that can be done with the AI. It really depends. And just related to that, before I move to Daniel, so there's one question that says, how does machine learning relate to AI? Uh, how it can be related to uh, AI. Actually, it is one of the pillars of uh, AI in the machine learning. Uh, let's say it's one of the first steps that AI was uh, structured upon. Uh, for example, if you want to make a prediction or to fine tune your data, machine learning can be um, applied in the pre-processing data. 
So, uh, for example, you want to fill out, uh, let's say for structured data, fill out a few columns with the uh, logistic regression or something like that. That comes in the pre-processing phase before introducing to any AI uh, models. That's how it can be implied, for instance. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, Daniel, so Hi, how, how can individuals prepare for the transformative impact of Agile and AI? And if you can fuse that to where they intersect to, there yeah, are quite a number of questions about the intersection and uh, convergence. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Carlos, um, for that complex question. Um, <laughs> so uh, there's, there's uh, the agile ways of working um, seek to drive a specific um, culture that enables digital transformations. And I said earlier, culture, the wrong culture would, would, would eat up your digital transformation for breakfast. It would, if, if so to have the, 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 the right culture in place, um, businesses must undergo an agile transformation. Then they can get the best out of the technologies that they are implementing. These technologies we roll out would, be, would produce a lot of data, as Dora said. So much data is uh, that is available in the cloud for businesses to leverage on. And with the agile ways of thinking, you are able to have an iterative approach towards using that data. If, if you are fixed, if you have a fixated mindset um, towards uh, delivery of projects, initiatives, where um, it's phase heated, people are not collaborating, you wouldn't get the best out of the data that these um, technologies are rolling out. So there's um, Agile enables the, the, the use of that data. It gives, you, gives our analysts that mindset uh, needed to leverage and make the best use of the data out there. For businesses to uh, the competencies required at the business level will be more of, let's say, identifying um, what culture you need to enable your strategy, then putting in the right practices in terms of organizing the, the organizational design that will help deliver that culture. There are, there are, there are some use cases out there in terms of what your what a digital strategy should be for let's say a banking sector and there are other use cases of what technology organizations are using but for your op design it will be unique and peculiar to you so you would they would require a framework um, and the, the the one of the most widely used framework according to the state of agile report is the skilled agile framework and when they leverage on that framework with the various trainings in it trainings for leadership um, the the people those building the software and those supporting the build of the software when you have these trainings and the right coaching they build the competence to be able to deliver on the transformation at an individual level um, there's there's so much demand for for digital skills, so we are it's the right time to leverage on agile trainings and agile rules like the Scrum Master, Product Owner, Product Manager, agile BA courses to build that muscle memory, that mindset that is needed um, to enable your organization drive its digital transformation. So these are the two levels we could see. Uh, building competencies. Yeah. I would want to take this question. What kind of security measures should be considered when we are going into this kind of transformation, when we are focusing more on AI? It's, it's, it's a major concern to a lot of people, and people are much concerned about the um, security implications. So, can you help us with that? Regarding the security measures when it comes to AI usage, uh, it is really debatable nowadays. 
um, in terms of, um, let's say, data breach, data theft, um, and many other challenges. Uh, but the concerns that might arise is uh, how the data will be rendered to the user, um, are, the, are there any limitations for the access? Um, there are many users who can modify and amend the data that's being fed, let's say that it's fed to the model, and the other users who are receiving this data. There should be some flow that could limit and control the uh, these um, amendment of data and uh, how it is being processed. Um, let's say that one of the solutions that are used uh, nowadays is the firewalls or intrusion prevention systems to protect AI systems for unauthorized uh, access and network-based attacks. Um, and also there's this uh, securely storage of data and encrypted database or cloud environments with appropriate access controls. So we now see that uh, the main, uh, let's say, challenge or threat that is being exposed to the whole world is uh, how you can access the data. That's, let's say, the first uh, red line for the challenge and then comes other challenges. Um, I still have a couple of minutes. There's one interesting question that has come up in the chat. This is, can AI become a threat to Agile itself? And um, the person asks this question because um, while AI has the potential to enhance and optimize certain aspects of Agile practices, it may also introduce challenges and considerations that need to be addressed. So do you think AI can become a threat to Agile? in an organizational sector. Okay, I, I would um, I would say um, this this these two practices are symbiotic. They feed off each other. Um, you need the agile mindset to leverage the data to create AI models, and you will need the AI models to improve your processes. And this it's a cycle that would would keep going on as we churn out more data and um, as um, people leverage the agile mindset to uh, come up with uh, the AI models to improve efficiency. So I'll say um, they don't compete against each other, rather they complement each other to deliver a successful transfer. I would also confirm this from my side. Um, I think that Agile and AI are working together instead of competing or fighting against each other because none of them are, let's say, strict or limited to certain path. They both uh, go to different paths. They are both flexible. So I don't think they are against each other conceptually. And there should be, let's say, a mindset, uh, as Daniel said, uh, an, an Agile one that knows how uh, you how you can use the AI agilely. <laughs> and so this webinar was brought to us by Lean Icon Technology and Training. So Lit is a leading provider of services in consulting, in coaching, and training and to drive successful agile digital transformation. We run courses, safe courses in Scrum Master, product owner, product management, and business analysis as well. Next month, we'll be having our next webinar that will be on leadership and coaching. And that will be by Shelley Thompson and William Persina. Um, <clears throat> it will be held on the 19th of July. So you can visit our website uh, at leanicontechnology.co.uk for more information on that. And thanks for staying with us through the session. My name is Carlos, an agile consultant and trainer at LIT. And um, once again, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you all. Have a nice Thank day. You. Bye. Bye.